What's up you guys? In this video, we attack the rear coilovers from Viking. As you guys can see, I have everything out. All the suspension pieces is out. The coils, the shock in preparation to get the coilovers in, but I wanted to get under the car real quick. That's why I'm taking you to show you. I had got a upper shock brace that goes all the way across from one shock tower to the other over there. And I wasn't sure if it was gonna fit because it was gonna be a tight fit because my exhaust goes so high and I wasn't sure and it is not touching. I got my hand up or in between and sure enough, you guys, we have a win. Let's get into the video. All right, you guys, what it do? Your boy is back at it again. And as uh, the uh, intro stated, uh, I got my shock tower up and fit. So I'm really happy about, about that. I've been um, under the car doing some other things and getting this ready and prepped for the uh, install underneath the car. And now we have to put it all together. So it seems pretty straightforward for the most part. Uh, so this is a rear a coil over kit from Viking. I got the full kit for an A body. Now, because of that, I'm going to have to deal with some issues <laughs> in regards to this four nine inch, man. This four nine inch is kind of throwing some curveballs at me here. So, um, I have a couple options in regards to, um, what I'm going to do to mount this. So basically the, the relocation bracket that's actually back in the box again, uh, and wrapped up so it uh it relocates the uh, normal shock so instead of the shock let's say let's just say uh i don't know let's use this as an example let's just say this is the end of where the normal shock would go for the chevelle on the end here well the uh, relocation bracket for this coilover setup uh, mounts to that bottom of the shock tower and it actually turns and puts the uh the coilover over here instead of here so that way it's not so much out of, out of an angle, but it's kind of more straight up and down and it puts it closer towards the inside of the car. Uh, so, but the problem with that is, is the uh, shock tower is a little bit wider on my Chevelle and not as thin as the normal <laughs> Chevelle we're in, if that makes any sense. So basically the bracket that I have would slide onto a normal Chevelle, but because this one is a four nine inch and the shock tower is a little wider, it won't go on. So it's probably maybe a half inch or so uh, too wide. So that's kind of a bummer. So I'm trying to think of other options I can do without uh, breaking the bank and ordering uh, a new set of, of uh, lower shock mounts for, or coilover mounts for this car. So I have a couple options, so we will see. So anyways, uh, in regards to this here, I have everything laid out. This is one coilover for one side. And so I just wanted to kind of show you the assembly process. I'm gonna kind of temporarily put it together and, um, and then that way you guys can kind of see. So basically you have your coilover here. Uh, this is double adjustable for uh, compression and rebound. So you can kind of set it to your settings both ways. And it gives you a, a, a guide here, kind of like comfort handling, autocross, drag, all that kind of stuff. So, and, and then different horsepower ranges as well too. So what I'll probably set it at, I'll set it at the upper end of a uh, comfort. So that way it's kind of like towards the handling section just for initial setup. And then we'll go from there. I think it's about 19 positions, 18 clicks is what it goes to until it gets to zero. Right now they're all at uh, zero right now. So when I go ahead and set it in the car, um, I'll go ahead and, and put those 
uh, ratings up to four and then kind of just go from there after driving. Uh, these are the directions here. And of course, it sends you a warning about anti-seize, but I won't, I won't install anti-seize right now. I think I have a bottle of it somewhere. Yes, I do. So I have a bottle of anti-seize before I drop it. Uh, right here. So I got the gray kind, which is perfect because it'll kind of hope hopefully blend in a little bit with this. So basically you apply anti-seize on it. So that way the you'll prevent uh, galling and seizing of uh, the jam nuts and everything. So you want to definitely put that on first. But like I said, right now, I'm not going to apply it just because I want to just try to just uh, show you guys how this all goes together. Fairly simple here. Again, this whole kit everything together for the Chevelle A body. And it's really nice. What they do is they put it at a competitive price and make it a double adjustable. Uh, and it's kind of competitive. It's kind of like an in-between price between like a QA1 or a Ride Tech or anything like that. So um, anyways, it came out to like 1500 bucks. Uh, total for front and back everything all the hardware needed in order to get this thing going so I thought that was pretty cool um, anyway so I'm gonna go ahead I got my snap ring so what you have to do first is hopefully snap ring tool is kind of a a, a uh, smaller one so I don't know if it's gonna work you take a snap ring tool you go ahead and put that on there like so and you put on the set on the setting where it can compress it like that. And then you put on your safety glasses <laughs> just in case this thing wants to snap back at you. And you go ahead and put it right in there, squeeze it, set it in and boom, make sure it's in there. It's good. The screwdriver, just make sure it's set in there. There it is, so it just snapped right in. Perfect, good. And I'm gonna do top and bottom while we're at it. All right, so what you wanna do first is put in your bearings here. But one of these sides was kinda of hard to get in. There we go. So it goes right in there. Then you put your C-clip in. Kinda of hard to see, I know. So I gotta make sure it's in there. Perfect. All right, and you just wanna make sure it's snapped in. Good, that should be good. Okay, perfect. So we got that one there. And you just do the same thing on the other side here. So hopefully that goes right in. Oh, that one went in smooth. All right, and then next up, what you do is you put in your, I don't know the correct terms for all these, but ones, I think this is your lock nut. This is your, Jam nut, or one of them, I don't know, jam nut, lock nut, whatever. Uh, but you put this one first, and you have to put this side up, because this side with the raised lip is what kind of uh, separates it from the bottom one, and that's what locks it in place as well, too. So, again, you want to put uh, a little bit of anti-seize on, uh, but just for the time's sake in the video, I'm going to just put this on for now, just to kind of show you how it's going to go on. Then... You put this one on, they go on pretty easily. And again, you can see, kind of locks it in place. Even just by barely doing it, it like won't even move. So um, you have your spanner wrenches, you have to buy these separately. And I had to buy a separate set of these, these thrust bearings separately as well. But you got two um, tools here, spanner wrenches. And what you do is you put one on one of them and then the other one on the other one and you turn them obviously opposite ways and then that's what locks it in place so that's where you get your locking and unlocking and your adjustment so all you got to do is you want to tighten this it'll compress the spring and then raise the height of the car you lower it down and then that's what drops the spring and that'll drop that's what also will drop the car so you have that there um then it it, it the kit comes with one of these actually one of these little washers or whatever. Uh, but it's suggested that you buy these. And of course, they're going to sell them separate. It was like 20 bucks. Uh, but what it does is it makes adjusting it on the car a lot simpler because you have this these bearings here. So the, the uh, little nuts and everything will spin a little bit more freely. You can still do it without 
uh, with just this, this is what they supply with it. However, it makes this one uh, a lot more easier. Just for now, then you would put anti-seize on this as well. Put this on, on top, so that way this will spin freely, but then this will also allow the coil to kind of spin on it as well. Then you would throw that on there like so. Well, you would probably, what you would probably want to do actually is just go ahead and extend this. And there's a couple suggestions that um, I was told that you should do in regards to this as well. And I'll share, share this with you in a moment. Uh, but you have this here, like so. You go ahead and slide that on. Perfect. Hopefully you guys can kind of see that. And then uh, this is what kind of like locks it in place right here. So you put that on and boom, you're good to go. Now, once this is mounted to the upper portion of the shock tower, which I believe is this one right here, you slide that in and then that's what kind of allows you to sit and mount it up to the upper portion of the shock tower. And once this goes down, then this compresses against this and then you're good to go. So you also want to set a little bit of preload on it as well. So from what I was told, you get it up until it's just touching and then you want to do a few turns to kind of get that preload on it uh, so that way you're not installing it just on a on a loose spring uh, on the car because when you set the car down then it's gonna um, you know compress the spring even more and you don't want to do it technically loosely uh, on the car so you want to set that that slight preload on it so uh, a guy actually had a great suggestion also as well when I was uh, watching one of his videos he had mentioned, uh, just for kind of a visual, that uh, to extend this all out, like so, and then mark the center of this uh, shock, so that way you kind of know where the middle is and where the shock should be riding, um, you know, kind of in between its travel for, you know, most of the time anyway. And so what he did is he marked a marker here, then he put a different color about an inch up and then about an inch below that mark. So that way you had good visuals of kind of like where you would need to be as far as where the, where the shock is set and where it's going to ride. So I thought that was actually a really, really, really good idea. So I think that I'm going to do that also uh, as well. But uh, for the most part, that's assembly. And maybe this one goes, yep, so this one goes down here uh, in between uh, your, uh, down on the bottom. So you have your bolt, your through bolt to uh, mount to the bottom of the shock tower. So, uh, I'm just waiting on a part to come in. So that way we can, uh, go ahead and do install on this, but I just definitely just wanted to show you assembly of it first. And then the next stage will be putting this dang thing on the car. All right, y'all. So a few days later, your boy has been at it. As you can see, no coilovers in the box, just hardware. So I'm gonna take you under the car. I got one installed and there she go. That's what she looked like there. And she in there and boy, oh boy, does this car have to give me an issue every time about something y'all, man. All right, so just real quick, so I don't drag this portion out. Uh, I actually will probably time-lapse me trying to install the other side there so you can kind of see, but I'll give you the rundown uh, before right now and after I'm done. So uh, what these are double adjustable, I have them on the very lowest setting right now until I uh, go ahead and kind of install them for their final time. But everything's just kind of temporarily uh, torqued down except for the upper portion because that was a bi itch to try to get in there. Uh, but what I have right now is I have it set to a, a basically I have a preload on it right now. So what I did is I put the spring in and then I tightened it just enough so the spring didn't move. And then what was recommended from what I found is, is to give it about three full turns and that kind of sets the initial preload. Uh, then you can kind of adjust it accordingly as you uh, need to. I have these little mounting brackets. Now these are, uh, not a whole lot of people run these, but these are relocation uh, shock brackets that actually QA1 uh, Spawn, I think it's called uh, their name, or it's almost pronounced like Spoon. It could be Spoon, but I think it's Spawn, S-P-O-H-N. And they sell them, actually, I think QA1, 
recommends them uh, to uh, their customers as well too. So I bought these from Amazon. They came pretty quick. I needed something pretty quick so I can get these mocked up. I also have some other ones coming as well. Uh, the reason why I didn't go with the original ones as stated before is because it relocated it too close to the, uh, the exhaust. And also this portion right here is too wide for the brackets that they sent them with. So the bracket was like, like a square or like a U shape and it actually fit. Ooh, of course, man, this freaking, <laughs> uh, this freaking anesthesia gets everywhere, man. But anyways, it fit right behind it. And what it, um, what it was, it was just too narrow, y'all. It was too narrow, so it would not fit. So what I had to do is go with the alternate route, which is this. And also they made, and they discontinued these, they made a bracket that I have coming probably, I think I just got to update this actually coming earlier. And I found it. Uh, one left, you guys, they are sold out everywhere. Somehow, some way, one guy was selling them on eBay. Uh, he had one box left. And they uh, discontinued these, I think, probably just recently because I've seen them online through Summit uh, just like maybe a month or so ago, and now they're just gone. Uh, so I guess they totally just discontinued them. And what they were is they were brackets that put it in a fixed position, something like this. And the bracket mounted to this, and then you drilled a hole here, and then um, it had two basically studs or bolts uh, well, I had one stud through here, and then you drilled a hole here, and then you put a bolt through there, and then you were good to go. But it put it in this fixed position. Well, I think those kind of got a bad rap because they put the shock in a fixed position, and then also it was too much out of out of an angle on a lot of these uh, coilovers. And so I think what was happening was uh, the coilover wasn't working as efficient, and they were breaking the upper portion of the shock tower mount up there. Now. Also, I think why, uh, too, is because oh, back then, I don't know, and I could be mistaken, but I don't know if running an upper shock mount bracket and that shock uh, mount bracket actually adds rigidity to the top because these uh, shock mounts weren't um, actually set up to run coilovers because you have the not only a shock, but you also have the, the weight of the, the, uh, the force of the spring all on that shock tower versus on the coil perch and the uh, the coil side itself. So uh, that's why. So I don't know if, if a lot of people were running them back then. So I think that's why that bracket got a bad rep. But since then they've made more efficient, better brackets, adjustables, things like that. So, but for me and my application, plus I'm not gonna be racing it or autocrossing it or anything like that. Uh, I think I'll be good with either one. So I'm gonna try it. These are grade eight bolts or grade eight, grade eight bolts. Uh, heavy duty, actually, like I said, QA1 uh, suggests these uh, on a lot of different builds as well. So I did my research on them. So anyways, I'll just run them for now. They're 3 16 uh, thick steel. It's solid. So my exhaust clears on this side, but I can't say that for the other side. Uh, and as you can see, plenty of room on my rear axle. So all I got to do is kind of just uh, tighten them down temporarily and then uh, we can go ahead and, and put the wheels on and see how this height fits with my wheels on. But what I'm going to do, just over there, is I'm going to take you to the other side of the car. That way I can kind of show you what was the issues that I ran into because like I said, everything is battling me with this car, you guys. Everything's battling me. So this is my coilover all put together, anti-seized and everything. So I'm going to move it out the way. No. No, no, no. Oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Dang it. I might have a leak. Shoot. All right, you guys. So what we got here is we got the shock tower holes right here. So that's where the bolts go through to, to lock everything in. All right. Uh, so these were actually too small for the bolts that they sent you. So... I wanted to use those bolts because they were grade eight bolts and they were a little bit thicker. And so I had to kind of um, hollow out the hole just a little bit. Also here too, these bolts are a bitch to get in you guys. I mean, I'm not even joking. Uh, so I struggled on that side to get the nut in at the top. I was having one finger, I was trying everything. So look, what I ended up doing is taping 
one side with tape and then I taped the nut to that so I could actually just use one finger to go up there and kind of hold it. And that actually worked, but I, it was a pain trying to get that up there. So I ended up actually getting one up there after probably about an hour of battling with it. Finally got it started and then I couldn't get the other one in. So what ended up happening was, is this bracket that they send you is not completely to spec uh, up there. So I don't know if you guys can see, you can see kind of how, how the original holes from the shock tower are a little bit off, but I, uh, opened up the hole a little bit and I, and I uh, also kind of waddled up these holes so they'll fit. So I was battling that. And then since I tightened down that side, cause I was like, I'm not going to untighten that thing and take this off and move this. Uh, this was also off a little bit. So I had to drill in here to kind of hollow out that hole a little bit as well. And man, finally, finally, we got this thing to fit. So that's where we're at right now, you so guys. now let's go ahead and uh, try to put this all in, get this, the wheels on and see if it all fits. So what I'll probably do is try to time lapse this the best I can. Hopefully you guys can see. And uh... Man, I'm at the point where I just want to say F this car and just throw it down a damn cliff, y'all. Man, I was trying to time lapse this because I thought it was going to be fairly easy and it was not at all. That bracket and that shock mount hole and all that stuff gave me so much damn grief, you guys. It wouldn't line up. The holes wouldn't line up. I tried to hollow it out more. I couldn't get it to line up. What the problem is, and I don't know, where's my dang flashlight at? So the problem is, is there's a spacer, some sort of bracket of some sort that sits between the uh, coilover and the uh, the top of the shock mount. Those holes do not line up with this Chevelle. I don't know if it's this Chevelle or all the Chevelles, but no one tells you anything in regards to that. So I don't know if I'm only having that problem or not. So the problem is, is trying to mount this coilover up and it's not lining up and you take it back down and it's hard enough to hold the coil over with that bracket and try to put the, the through bolts in. It's just, it's a pain in the butt, you guys. And up and down, up and down, trying to, you know, take it down, put it back in, take it down, put it back in, trying to get those holes to line up. And it's just way, way off, you guys. So I finally got it and now it's in there. But anyways, it is in there, you guys, uh, temporarily. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to throw on the wheels right now, kind of just see what it looks like, and then we're just going to go from there, you guys. So uh, just stick with me. Um, it's I was trying to show you guys a step-by-step, -step, but it was just that up there was just too hard, you guys. And there was a, another video that I saw that he said that up there also gave him problems too, mainly installing that piece, but uh, and it was kind of hard to, to get the, um, the bolts in as well, but... I don't know if he had as much trouble as I did. It was it was insane. So anyways, uh, it's in there. It's at a little bit more of an angle than I want to. And I think that's why they made the relocation brackets because it, it mounts the shock over on this side. If you guys can see, so then on this side, it would put the, the coil over more up and down. Uh, but like I said, I think in the past, they had problems with this angle uh, being that the bracket up here uh i don't think a whole lot of people were using that so it was a, putting a lot of stress on just the shock tower itself as you can see the coil went over there so i'm pretty sure it's a little bit more reinforced uh but just the shock road over here so to have a, this 
uh, coil and the the shock riding on just the shock tower itself. I think that's where people were having problems, plus with the angle and the stress of everything on it. So uh, I'm going to just ride it like this. And for me, just kind of just having a, a regular daily uh, driven car, uh, I think I'll be probably okay. When that other bracket comes in, I'm going to see which one is the better of the two. Let me go ahead and, uh, and uh, get prepared to put these wheels on because I do want to see what it looks like uh, down on its um, lowest setting here and see if I gain any space from this. So uh, you guys uh, stay tuned. All right, y'all. So I've just been sitting here waiting for these things to charge because I'm using my cutoff wheel and it's running out the batteries fairly quickly because I got a fair amount to cut. But I have had to trim the uh, inner portion of the Enderwell little flange, the little lip right here. And it was something that I thought that I was probably gonna have to do anyway. I just didn't want to and I didn't, and I was hoping that I didn't have to, but as you can see right here, this is how much I just cut today. And I cut probably this much, this thickness off already uh, the other day. So this is how much more extra was left over. I mean, that's crazy. This is how much more extra is left over and you still have to account for the, the fender trim, the wheel well trim as well too. So that's a lot of excess uh, leftover metal that they use from the factory. So, I mean, I, I would imagine they, they, that they would never have thought of running uh, 24 inch rims in the back and 10 and a half inches wide. But at the same time, it was just a lot. I mean, the trim right here, I mean, if you count this and then you go out another three quarters of an inch, or I mean, half inch or, well, not three quarters of an inch, but maybe a, if you count another half inch or so out, maybe even more, five eighths. I mean, that's crazy amount of extra, extra <laughs> on there. So that's what I'm doing right now. I have uh, my tape over this right now. I kind of made like a shroud. So any, any, um, debris or shavings or anything like that would not get on the car. I did an initial drop on the car because right now I kind of have it on the lowest setting. Uh, well, at least I think it's the lowest setting on the coilovers. And man, it was tucked in. I mean, I had it down on this side and it was like down to here, you guys. So I'm looking to go low. And the reason why is because since there's 24s on the back, 22s in the front, uh, naturally there's going to be a little bit of a rake. And so what I want to try to do is level it out so there's no rake, but that way I have major tuckage in the back and that's what I am after. So hopefully this will work. Anyways, I'm waiting for this thing to finish charging and then I'll chime back in with the final uh, product as you guys will be able to see what it looks like. All right, y'all, so just a quick little insert here into the video. As you can see, I'm trying to figure out why my rear tires are hitting the back of the uh, rear quarter panel so bad that inner fender well portion of uh of the um quarter panel so anyways what i've come to find out and i mentioned this in a clip i don't know if you guys heard me but i uh, had said that i'm gonna need lower uh trailing arms and uh, like adjustable ones so um the reason i said that is because there was a huge gap from the front of the tire to the front of that uh that uh the quarter panel the wheel well area so and i know that you can kind of shift the rear end kind of front to back if you get adjustable uh, lower trailing arms so but i didn't know why it was really doing that like why is it off so bad because it wasn't like that before even with the stock ones so um and i know the stock wheels and tires were a lot smaller but they were pretty much centered inside that wheel well and um i'm still at work you guys i'm actually just leaving but i'm thinking about this and this is how dedicated i am to the build and to you guys so i wanted to just to kind of get this quick uh, video made while it was fresh on my mind so what i did last night is i actually did some research and what i've come to find out is when you when you lower a car i guess it can change the the um the uh, axle uh, where it sits like inside of the uh, wheel wheel so in my case it actually pushed it back and that's why and i guess that totally makes sense and also i slammed the dang car pretty low and so uh the coilovers already gave me a two inch static drop just by me putting them in and then i can also lower it another two inches from there so i basically gave it a four inch drop right off the bat and uh that's my problem so 
Uh, and that's why I have that big gap from the front end of the, the rim and tire to that front end portion of um, the uh, wheel well. So that's why I'm ordering double adjustable lower trailing arms from UMI. I found the set on Summit and man, this thing's nickel and dime me, man. I didn't want to spend the money. I was just going to get single adjustable, but I was like, you know what? It was a little bit more. Me and my buddy have this running joke. Might as well, might as well do it. So I did it, man. And so those will be coming uh, actually tomorrow. I ordered them from Summit, man, Summit so fast. So I actually ordered them uh, late, really, really late like last night, like 12.30 a.m. And they're already coming tomorrow. So hopefully I'll get them here. I already have my other uh, lower trailing arms off. They're Hotchkiss just fixed uh, trailing arms. So what I'll probably do is put those set of trailing arms on my Buick and then I have to take the rear sway bar off of my Buick, and that's also a Hotchkiss uh, brand. And I'm gonna take that to get powder coated along with my front Hotchkiss sway bar that I bought new for the Chevelle. I'm gonna take both of those to get powder coated orange uh, to match the car. That's the only suspension pieces and anything under the car that's gonna be orange is just those, uh, because that's probably what you're gonna see mostly and first under the car. And then I have bought a new adjustable a sway bar for the Chevelle, but it's probably not gonna work with the UMI lower trailing arm, so I'll probably just put that on my Buick. So good thing I got two eight-body cars that can kind of shift some parts around, but anyways, that's what I came to the conclusion. Hopefully the uh, double adjustable trailing arms do the trick, so you will probably be seeing a video on that, and hopefully I can move it forward enough, and then I'm gonna raise the car probably another inch, inch and a half, maybe two, just depends on how I like uh, where it sits. So anyways, stay tuned for that, you guys. I just wanted to put this a clip in there because I don't think I really talk about it uh, in my next clips here or at all because I was so frustrated I just wanted to to get done with the video and uh, and call it a night so anyway stay tuned for that and stay tuned for the continuation of uh, the video as I close it out all right you guys bear with me for a moment here but I'm gonna lower it I have to check both sides to make sure it's not hitting and then I gotta take out the jack stands so bear with me for a little bit Man, y'all, this is hitting. Dang. That might be too low. Dang, yeah. It's hitting. Shoot. Well, it's tucking though. Shoot, y'all might need to get some adjustable control arms. Dang. Yeah, she hitting right here. On the other side, it's not hitting though. All right, y'all, let me see if I can make this work. I'll chime back in. All right, y'all, this video is a wrap. The coilovers are installed. Uh, they're just snugged in. They're not totally tight except for the uh, top shock mounts. So all in all, it was a pain in the ass. I'm not gonna even lie. Uh, just trying to adapt it to this Ford nine inch has been a pain in the butt. Um, you know, I mean, I guess it saves some money versus buying new, uh, but I mean, it came with the car, so I just want to use it. I mean, it came with the car. It seems like to be a pretty good we're in so at least i hope it is but uh i mean it's in there i mean you can see the crazy thing is it, def it definitely has that gm uh offset like you know one side is lower than the other one so this side sits at like 27 just above 27 and the other side sits at like 26 and a quarter so um i know that's kind of normal you know for a lot of these a bodies and old school cars uh, to kind of have one side sit a little bit off. But, you know, good thing with the coilovers, you can level it out. But, yeah, I tried to level it out the best I could. So right now I have the settings both um, at the same just for now. Um, and then I put the compression and rebound both on uh, the upper 
end of uh, the comfort, so almost to handling. So I have uh, the rear uh, C knob compression at three, and then this one at five for the rebound. So, um, shoot, man, I think it looks pretty good though. For the most part, I'll take you over to the other side. <sighs> Sorry, y'all, I'm just tired. I don't even know what to say right now. I've been out here for so long trying to get this thing. But uh, I'll post a picture, unless I have already, man, of this thing squatted at its lowest. <laughs> oh, man, it was so low. But obviously, I can't ride like that. But yeah, y'all, I mean, it's in there. I mean, yeah, this side definitely sits lower. You can tell. I mean, about three quarters of an inch. I mean, it is in there for the most part, and it seems to be doing the job. So since it's not torqued down or anything, uh, I'm definitely going to put it back on jack stands. My little trick with the, uh, or the trick that I got from the guy on YouTube of marking the the uh, midline of the shock works perfect you guys i mean perfect so i can use that as a gauge to kind of see where the shock lies and uh whatnot so it actually has been working great but yeah you guys that's pretty much it i am tired dirty hungry <laughs> and i'm about to go inside and uh, get something to eat and spend the rest of valentine's day with my lady here so uh, anyways you guys if you're new to the channel definitely think about subscribing hit the notification bell all that good stuff y'all my name is mr griffin 23 uh hopefully you're enjoying these videos i know they're not i guess they are in depth but they're not step by step by step on on how to do things i was trying to film this install um uh, i did one already because i wanted to do the other one for you guys and it was just a pain in the butt I, for me to try to film this and 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 the amount of trouble it was just getting giving me it was a pain in the butt and it wasn't that the install itself was bad it was just the different tolerances from the kit that they gave me and the brackets and they just didn't line up and the angles and then me being on my back it was just it was just a pain because the coil over itself kind of lines up where it should go and it bolts to the bottom great but the upper part man it was just a pain in the butt hopefully you guys enjoyed that y'all man it's coming along though it's coming along so anyways you guys i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here if you're new to the channel definitely think about subscribing hitting that notification bell all that good stuff y'all mr griffin 23 i'm out of here deuces peace out